Good morning, saints. We give thanks to God for the privilege of standing here behind God's sacred desk. And also for the people of First Church and for its under shepherd, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Aarons your pastor and my friend. And so we offer blessings for him and his wife, Susan, for the church family and all those gathered, and thank you immeasurably for the privilege to offer God's word this day. And on that note, I would invite you to please join me in prayer. So I bid you a gracious and blessed good morning. And if you would not mind, indulge me and turn to someone next to you and tell them God loves you and I'm glad to see you. Amen. And so I, I stand here today and I offer greetings and now it's time to dig deep into God's word. So I'm gonna come down and get down closer to where you are. Here I come. I am sure that you are aware that this is the birthday of Abraham Lincoln, one who is given the accolade of putting an end to slavery. 
that holds a deep connection with this church, does it not? Whether you know it or not, this is an abolitionist church. Did you know that? An abolitionist is someone who believed that slavery was a national sin. Say sin. And that it was the moral obligation of every American to help eradicate it from the American landscape. It's the job of all of us because sin is, according to 1 John 3, 4, lawlessness, rebellion against the law of God, that expression of God's revealed will for his creatures. And so those abolitionists all those years ago heard the call of God that said this must not stand. And on that note and in that vein, they declared we will not allow it to go further, not on my watch. Tell somebody the buck stops here. There were 42 people 42 people. 42 of those abolitionists in 1852 on September 24th left Second Presbyterian Church and formed this church. They chose to leave Second Perez and chose to form this church to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with the Lord their God. Tell someone they made a choice. And for four years, until 1856, you became involved in that ministry and after four years, you went from third Presbyterian to first congregational. Tell somebody, that's an upswing. From third to first in four years. That's amazing, don't you think? Tell somebody, yay, first. Yes, indeed. And as they did their work that preceded us being here, one who stood with them said this, the substance of all realities is in this religion of Jesus Christ, but it can be real only to those who will do his will. You all believe that? That's what Washington Gladden said. You all know him? You all seen him around? He's in every era and avenue of this place that social justice he wanted you to get was everywhere and it lives even today, does it not? You see, he understood what it meant to follow what God had said to him. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, what did I say? Y'all got to keep up now. <laughs> the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. Everybody say, hover. And then in verse 3, God said, let there be light. The Lord God made a choice to create. He didn't have to. He chose to. Amen? 
And then in chapter 1, verse 27, toward the end of the Father's creative expression, then he chose to create you and me. Isn't that a blessing? Because he would look at this creation and so kindly and say, unless there is someone there to reflect my image, it's not complete. So he said, I'm going to create them who look like me, act like me, and can be like me, and they will carry me where they go. Tell somebody, no pressure. <laughs> And then in chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, following his creative journey, he blessed us, bestowed upon us the gift of choice. He said, I'm going to put this tree here. I'm going to plant it. Now, I'm telling you, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Hear anything else you want, but leave that one alone. And so we then entered into the realm of choice. God gave us the ability to choose. Isn't that good news? <laughs> yeah, you laugh because that's the way we well, are. <laughs> yes, yes, he gave us the ability to choose right then at that moment. He said, you can now choose. And then our Old Testament text today tells us in verse 15, see I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, keep his commands and decrees and laws, and then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering. Tell somebody, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Look at what God did. See, I, I, I know your history here at, at, at the church, and I know that that, that Washington Gladden, according to what the history says, that he preached twice a day. He'd preach a morning sermon and an evening sermon, and they both lasted 45 minutes each. So I got an hour and a half up here. Ain't that good? Amen. Amen. Behind his pulpit. Amen. Okay, now. Our text today says, before us, the opportunity to actively choose. And then verse 16 says, yet that choice is not to be exercised in a vacuum, but rather explored or employed and filtered through our love of the Lord our God and our choosing to walk in his way. You got quiet on me. Choosing to walk in his ways. And because the Lord God commands us to love, what's it tell you? Hear me on this. It should tell you that love is not an emotion because you can't command emotion, can you? Can I command you, be sad, or be happy, or be excited, I can't, com you can't command emotion, can you? But he commands us to love, doesn't he? So that must mean it can't be an emotion. Then you ought to ask somebody, well then what is it? I didn't hear you. I'm glad you want to know. See, love from God's perspective is the choice, say choice, to want or desire 
the best outcome for the beloved, no matter what it costs the lover. The choice to want or desire the best outcome for the beloved, no matter what it costs the lover. You get me? That's the way God loves us. When Jesus was here, he decided before he got here to love us. Because if he had not decided that, what we did to him would have made him not love us. His emotion, he would have quit a long time ago. Because if you hit me in the face and you spit on me and beat me 39 times and then hang me on a cross and I'm going to look at down you and wink at you and say, love you, appreciate it, you're in my heart. But yet he loved us anyway because he decided to love us before he got here. It was a choice, not an emotion. Okay? He commands us to make that same choice. Too many times we get involved in, well, they hurt my feelings, so I'm mad at them. Or, or they didn't do what I want them to do, so, so I, I, or, 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 or they, they're on the wrong side of this issue, so I'm going to, or, or they just, I, I, so I, and that's not what love is. When you love, you have to choose to want or desire the best outcome for the beloved, no matter what it costs you, which means your emotions are not at play. It's a choice you make. Amen? Don't you know that I am so flawed that if my wife did not choose to love me, I'd be up a creek. It's not about emotion. Because I can mess with those. I know how to push buttons from way back. But, but the point is that, 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 that she loved me enough to look past my faults and see my needs like God does. That's why God gave her to me. And I'm blessed because of that. So if, if you are going to love, you got to take that on as what you're going to do. Because that's what love is. Saints, it's not about how you feel. Okay? Now, and love requires walking in ways of him who is love because love requires obedience and not permission. We got to learn to follow what God says, even though it hurts. Sometimes it does. Okay? Okay? Sidebar. I'm going to tell you a secret. Lean in. I come from a tradition of call and response. <laughs> so if you don't respond, I'm going to keep calling. <laughs> so unless you want this to go on for into the late night, you need to answer me when I talk. Otherwise, we're going to be here a while. You think I'm playing, don't you? <laughs> okay, so, 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 here we are. And so because of that, in obedience to God, the word of God, he commands he, us, his disciples, to follow his laws and decrees, and benefits come because of that, because like Increase and blessings are all a product of choosing God above the world and then following that direction. So, in 1718 of Deuteronomy 30, he says, The laws the Father has put into place were, when violated, have consequences. How many of you have ever sped in your car? How many of you are honest? <laughs> See, if you violate the law, someday somebody catches up with you, don't they? And they give you a ticket so you can't do that. 
The laws of God are put into place for that very same understanding. If you violate them, there are consequences. And just like the law of gravity, God made up gravity, right? Because he made the world, right? He made, up, he made everything, right? So he made gravity too, right? And if you violate gravity, it's going to take you back down, right? If you don't believe that, then come up here and step off this pulpit and see if, see if you can violate gravity. It, will not, it won't allow you because God's laws stay in place. They will not change because you want them to change. Tell somebody, that's the law. And so because of that, we are called to love even though it doesn't feel like we want to be loved or feel lovable on our behalf. Because he says, that's my law. You love people. You love me, not because it's easy, but because I said so. How many of you are God's children? Anybody God's children out there? Sometimes when you're messing up badly, your father will say to you, because I said so. I don't want to hear it, because I said so. And so he said love, because he said so. Hey, now my, I, he wrote this. I'm just telling you what he wrote, okay? Don't be mad at me. So, he invites us once more to choose love because its choosing has benefits and its not choosing has challenges. Because this God I serve has always been a pro-choice God. He started out choosing. He gave us right to choose, and especially to choose every day. Every, every hour, every day, you have a choice to make. You are made of choices because if you can't choose, you can't love. And if you can't love, you can't be like God. Tell somebody, I am not an automaton. <laughs> you are a living creature. He doesn't make you do anything. What he does do is invite you to do everything. Amen? Amen? Oh, you talk good time. Good, okay. So, 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 firstly, before I move from here, I need you to understand that God wants you to choose because he made you in his image and he chooses, so you must choose. Not based on anything other than that's what he told you to do. All right, so, back to First Church. The Romans and the Pharisees, they dismissed Jesus as a street preacher. Just out there on the highways and byways, talking about God, no big deal. Today, I want to be a street preacher. A street preacher. Say street preacher. Street. Take a street preacher. Street. And my sermon today is about the street. You think I'm playing? Do you know where you are? This church, this first church, is, is located on Broad Street. Say Broad Street. You know why? Because Broad Street is the only street in Columbus when it was first laid out that you could turn a horse-drawn cart around without backing up. That's why it's Broad Street. You know that? So keep that. I'm going somewhere. Don't, don't, don't get, keep that. So. To turn around according to the gospel is to repent, right? So he placed you flatly on the street where he talks about repentance by his very name. That's why you're on Broad Street, right? And so you might say, well, that's okay, Pastor, but we have several churches on Broad Street. 
we have Broad Street Presbyterian, we have this and that, we, so, so we're no better. Yeah, 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 anyway. But he put you at Broad and Ninth. Say what? Say what? That's what you gotta understand. Nine in the Bible is the exact hour that Jesus finished his journey with us and gave up his spirit to God. That's when he died and paid for our sins at the ninth hour. So that's when we were redeemed, right? So he put you at the intersection of repentance and redemption to be the first church on this corner to change lives. Did you know that? I've been here for a minute and I know that. You understand what God's done here. For 170 years, he held you here on the corner of Broad and Ninth to be the place where people can come and turn around and be then brought back to God. Tell somebody, look at us. <laughs> look at who we is. <laughs> I said that intentionally. I, 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 I meant to say he is. We, 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 we is. See, 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 that's the goal you have to understand who you are and who you are in God. Now, I'm, I'm not going to be here all this. I'm not going to be here for an hour and a half and tell you that. But, and I don't have time to tell you why the people who are sitting here are important to that vision. But you ask them later. They'll tell no. They'll talk to them after I go. But anyway. So you are at the intersection of redemption and repentance to allow people to come here and find God's love that he's placed here at this church. Now, whether you like it or not, you know it or not, that love is always a choice. Say a choice. So, Back before abolitionists did their work, there were people that were held enslaved in this country. Say amen. But even then, when you were enslaved, you still have choices, right? You can work slower. You can not work at all. You can run away. You can throw yourself off the ship. All these things, they're all choices. They might not be good choices, but they're all choices. That's, that's, you always have a choice. God gave you as a human being the ability to choose. Yes? So even in the worst times of your life, when they were in the middle of, of, of being captured and, 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 and chained, they would rise up from their infirmity and you would hear from the bottom of the ship holes, they'd say, they'd say, oh, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. And before I be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. No more darkness, no more darkness, no more darkness over me. Cause before I be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Got to be free. So they made a choice and you can make a choice. I don't care how bad things are, you get to choose right now. Will you be who you're called to be? Will you be first church? There used to be third prayers, but now it's at the corner of redemption and reconciliation. Or will you continue to be who the world says you are? It's another place on the block. No, you're not. You're first church. Say we're first church.
Desmond Tutu said, Christianity can never be a merely a personal matter. It has public consequences and must make public choices. You can't have your faith in a closet. Because it says faith without works is what? I'm sorry. Oh, I, 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 it's a metaphor. You didn't say anything because you, meant, you feel dead because you didn't say anything. Got it. Okay. Faith without works is dead. I got that from Okay. So, so, okay. So here we are. Because you're at part of First Church, you have to understand what he says in the gospel. He says that if you want to worship me, and worship comes from our impacting or being impacted by God in a space where God is present, that we might then hear from God and God hear from us and we might connect and then God might then call us out and, 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 and proclaim us as his own. We're owned in worship. We're pray, we're, we praise God in worship. He lifts us up in worship. Worship is how we connect with God, so much so that he told the Israelites, I mean the, the, the Pharaoh in Egypt, let my people go so they can go and worship me. Right? Right? Y'all lost it for a minute. Right? Okay. So, so you got to come and worship God. Right? Now, he says, the text says that if you hold something against your brother, leave your gift at the altar and then go make it right and then come back. You got it? You can't even worship God without making it right before you come in. So whatever you hold on to from your past and from last week or last, you got to make that right with whoever you got a problem with, make it right now because you can't worship until you do. Now you're saying, well, pastor, we're in church. So are we worshiping? If I put a chair in my garage and you sit on it, don't make you a car. I don't care where you are, you could be in church all day, but if you can't worship until you actually make right what's going on with you and the folk around you, because you can't worship God until you do that. So don't let the animosity and the stuff that's going on in the past stop you from being first church. Because, hear, because, hear this, if you do, God then can't do what he wants to do through you. You're in God's way. So I don't care what's happened today, right now today, you can make a, a, a pact with yourself, with the Lord God, to stop it right now and then decide you're going to worship God, not because you're in church, but because God's in you. You got quiet again. Okay. That's all right. So today's text is called, or this is called God is a pro-choice God, pro-choice God. He always wants you to choose every day to love and then through that love to make choices that would please him and bless you. Isn't that right? Now, how many of you have so many blessings you can't handle anymore? So if you need a blessing, then go worship God. Well, how do I do that? Learn to love each other, not because they're nice or because you like what they're saying or doing. Learn to want the best for them, no matter what they do or don't do, because you want the best outcome for the beloved who you love, no matter what it costs you. So swallow your pride and your, your, your hurt feelings and go make it right. Then come back and worship. Because you can't worship till you make it right. Not my words, it's what the Bible said. Behind this pulpit, they, 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 they watch the glass stand. That's what he said, right here. Sorry about that, but anyway. um, so, I got excited. Uh, okay, so, 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 so here we are at First Church. 
But you should know this is a blessed place because you started out with calling out in the middle of all that was culturally acceptable that we will not allow this sin to stand because it can't happen on our watch. And so in this Abraham Lincoln's birthday, Black History Month, all that stuff is going on, all that's about to turn your attention to the fact that there are great wrongs out there and great things to do out there, but they all start with you believing that you can choose and then choosing God above what we think is okay. Does that make sense? The sermon is a participatory event. You have to participate. Okay? okay? Now it's your turn. Are you ready? This is your line. Ya da 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 da. Why sound? Why sound? Ya da 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 da. Again. Ya da 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 da. Here we go. All we need is love. All we need is love. All we need is love. Love. Love is all we need because love is Jesus. Love is Christ. And love is what allows us to live into the legacy he provided for us here at this intersection between redemption and repentance. Because if you need love, then you need God. And if you need God, you need Christ. And Christ calls you not to look how you feel to make decisions, but rather than to look what God has said to change you so that you might then be able to worship God without the hindrances of unforgiveness, animosity, and lack of love. So if any of you have anything against anybody, today's day to let it go. I don't care what's going on in the past, or what's happening. You have got to get in your heads that love is the order of the day, because this is, this is Christ's church, not your church. And he's first, because this is first church, right? And you're on Broad Street, right? And brought you as you turn around. Go back to where you, so you can then get involved in being all God called you. Because too many people are coming your way down the road who will need to hear that they have come to a place where they can be not only repentant, but redeemed. All because of what God said. Is that clear enough? Is that clear enough? You got it? I'm almost done. You know, preachers from that, from my tradition, they say that when they're about 20 minutes out, but I'm, I'm not doing that there, but I'm almost, I'm almost, well, I'm almost done. <laughs> okay, here we are. The songwriter wrote, I will be done the troubles of this world. Soon I will be done with the troubles of this world. Soon I will be done troubles of this world. Why? I'm going to live with God. Don't you know that by accepting this mantle, you can once again be trouble free? Because if you have mess, and mess is going to come. Remember, Jesus had mess. They messed him up, but they never messed him out. He kept going because he loved before he started. So today, grab the mantle hard. Hold on to it. Just take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I'm meek and lowly, and I will, I will give you peace if you learn to love. There's peace in love. So let all the animosity go to, 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 because you are first church. And I proclaim to you 
from behind the desk of one who said that if you are truly Christian, you will then learn to let the love you have for my creation override even your own desires and challenges. So behind the secret desk that, that, that Washington Gladden preached from, in the pulpit of the crossroads of redemption and reconciliation of repentance and of a desire to truly live as God intends. He proclaimed today that we are no longer third. We are first church. And on this day, we renew our commitment to let love be our choice every day of our lives. Because after all, George, Paul, and Ringo told you it's all you need. Right? Right? And so let this become a place where every day you can enter into the world charged with the presence of God, uplifted by the spirit that is holy and filled with a, a joy that comes from only knowing if I love, I have all I need. And that's why the Lord God it's always a pro-choice God. Please, please, please choose today. He loves you too much to let you be lost in the sauce. That's so I'm about done now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the pulpit back to whoever, to, 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 to the church. I had it for a minute, it was good. I'm gonna give it back now. And I want you to know, I feel so blessed to have stood here before you and told you what God says. Now you have to choose to do it because I can never do it for you. It's on you, First Church. Won't you become again First Church? Go out and love somebody and let God use you to change the world. Hey, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you all. God bless.